All right, I'm going to call this school board meeting to order and we'll move down to section two approval of the agenda 2.1 changes to agenda and approval of agenda and we do have a couple of changes uh, we do have on consent agenda added item 8.24 motor vehicle lease for disaster transportation services between the school board of Okaloosa County and Belvedere Commons at Fort Walton Beach and added item 8.25 renewal of FSBA board docs pro licensing fee and service and with that I need a motion to approve the agenda move it Dr. White makes a motion do I have a second I'll second second Dr. Kelly any discussion hear none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. those opposed motion carries five to zero so now we'll move to section three recognitions 3.1 recognition of Riverside Elementary School academic team 2021 2021 nationwide fifth sixth grade fall American Answers champions and Mr. Chambers I'm going to turn it over to you sir thank you Mr. Bryant and school board so it's an honor to have so many uh, students here with us today and I want to say before we start you know one of the things we talked about a couple school board meetings ago is we talked about the next generation of Okaloosa schools and we talked about six pillars of what makes uh, Okaloosa who we are and one of those pillars was academic excellence. And we talk about what makes Okaloosa an A-plus school district. We've talked about academics, athletics, and the arts. And our students have the ability to participate and have opportunities to get experiences that are gonna last them throughout their educational journey and past. And when you have a group of elementary students going into a national competition in winning at a national competition and to go through the stress to go through the teamwork and coming together and to see it come together in terms of a national championship or as miss curly said a natty then that's a uh, that, that, that's a good thing and i'm going to read uh, a little bit of the description and this is for the riverside academic team riverside competed in the nationwide fifth and sixth grade fall america answers contest and won first place out of 71, 71 fifth grade teams that competed. America Answers Contest is an online scholastic competition in the fall and spring where schools from the United States compete against each other. Several Okaloosa schools have participated in the event over the last few years, and this is the first time an Okaloosa County school has won, the very first time. So again, we have uh, Principal Melissa Curley, who's here with us, if you would come forward. And also, we have with us Coach Gail Smith, if you would come forward as well. And before we do some uh, presentations, uh, you guys might have a few words about your amazing students. First of all, thank you, Mr. Chambers, Board Chairman. Thank you for having us today. This is very exciting for Riverside Elementary, large Title I school, to, so to be able to recognize the top and the best of the best is very exciting for us. This is the icing to our Valentine's cake, and we just appreciate <laughs> you guys having us. And so without further ado, we would love to represent these students and recognize them. Not 
here with us tonight. Okay, so while they're getting settled for the picture, I would like to just first recognize our amazing coach, Gail Smith, for all of our, her hard work and dedication. Every Monday, they practice and practice so that they can be the best. And then also, just a quick hand clap for our parents in the back. We refer to ourselves as a Riverside family. And without the support of our parents, these students would not be where they are today. So just a quick recognition for them. Okay, so now we're going to move to section four, and this is visitors, and 4.1 will be the proclamation in support of the Okaloosa County Commission on the Status of Women, presented by Ms. Linda Vancek, and I believe, Mr. Chambers, you want to? All right, and I'll start by reading the proclamation that, that we have before us, and uh, I know it'll come to a vote, and some of you may have some, some comments as well. A proclamation in support of the efforts of the Okaloosa County Commission on the status of women in raising awareness about human trafficking and promoting education of the dangers and warning signs of human trafficking. Whereas human trafficking, a form of modern day slavery, when individuals are subjected to exploitation or labor through force, fraud, or coercion, whereas Florida continues to rank third in the nation in the number of calls to the national trafficking hotline, whereas industries commonly targeted by human traffickers are located in Okaloosa County, as well as along Interstate 10, which has been used as a corridor for human trafficking, whereas victims include children, women, and men, whereas the average age at which a victim is trafficked is between the ages of 12 to 14, which are the ages of students in the Okaloosa County School District. Whereas human trafficking is often hidden in plain sight, meaning a victim may not appear to be subject to exploitation. Whereas local interventions are important for saving victims of trafficking and dismantling the criminal networks, which are often involved in other types of illicit activities. Whereas the Okaloosa County Commission on the Status of Women led a series of meetings with stakeholders from various Okaloosa County women's organizations and subject matter experts, including the executive director 
of the Florida Alliance to End Human Trafficking to discuss ways to fight human trafficking locally. Whereas the Okaloosa County Board of County Commissioners has pledged its support to raise awareness and whereas the Okaloosa County Commission on the Status of Women has asked for support on their efforts to combat this illegal activity. Now therefore, be it resolved by the School Board of Okaloosa County, Florida, that it does hereby support community efforts to raise awareness about human trafficking. Duly passed and with an approval of vote, adopted this 14th day of February 2022. All right, thank you, Mr. Chambers. And with that reading of the proclamation, I need a motion to, to, to vote on this. I need a motion to approve. I'll move it. So Ms. Garner makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? I'll second. Second. Dr. Kelly, any discussion? Fellow board members, I just, uh, you know, Thursday we had uh, Ms. Henley, who is here tonight, give us um, a really interesting and important uh, explanation of the status of this situation and everything and I appreciate your consideration I think it is so important that we show this support um, of the Commission of, of Women and the County Commissioners because of the problem that is seemingly to be increasing and as stated in the proclamation it seems to target students particularly girls in the ages that we have in our schools today so I would appreciate your consideration of this proclamation in support of our efforts in mainly educating the public on the signs and the problem thank you any other discussion hearing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed and the motion carries five to zero thank you so much fellow board members and we like miss Henley and I, do you have some guests with you to come up from the Commission and we'll present you the proclamation So, uh, Ms. Henley, thank you for reaching out to us, and okay. we are very happy tonight, um, uh, school board, to present you with this proclamation in support of fighting illegal human trafficking. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be with all of you tonight. We appreciate all you do, and thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Mr. Chambers, when I think about this, she comes back. When you think about the average age of listening, what they say, like 12 to 14, average, that means that there are children that are younger, and that's elementary. And that just gives me chills every time I hear that and I say that. And um, thank you, Ms. Ivanchek, because I know that this is just the beginning of another example of what Oak Coast County does to protect our children. And the more we can make this um, visible and more bring this to our attention, it's when I hear it right under our eyes or a silent, I forgot the exact little quote there. But this is just, um, thank you for bringing this Certainly. to yeah. all of our thank attentions. Thank you for your, your let's, both continue, confidence. let's continue to keep this out front. All right, so we are going to go down to public hearing. It is 6:15, so we do have one item for public hearing. 17.1 uh, is public hearing for adoption of new job description for career and technical education technician, presented by Dr. Lee Hale, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, and recommended by the Superintendent for approval. Is there anybody from the public here wishing to address item 17.1 tonight? Hearing and seeing none, I need a motion to approve. I'll move it. Ms. Savanchek makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? Second. Second. Dr. White, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries five to zero. So now we will move back up to section five. And let me get there. So this is uh, administrative personnel appointments. 
and 5.1 will be the appointment of Assistant Principal 1, 10-month Fort Walton Beach High School as recommended by the Superintendent for approval, Mr. Chambers. Thank you, Mr. Bryan, School Board. I bring before you Mr. Marcelo Mueller. Mr. Mueller is the son of Rosa and Thomas Mueller. Both were military and civil service. He is a product of the Oklahoma County Schools, where he attended Ocean City Elementary, spent six years in Germany in Dodd schools, and then attended all four years of high school at Fort Walton Beach. He graduated in 2002 and went on to attend Okaloosa Walton College and Florida Atlantic University, where he received a bachelor's degree in business management. He also has a master's degree in educational leadership from Arkansas State University. In 2009, he moved back to the Panhandle, where he began coaching soccer at Liza Jackson School and substitute teaching for Okaloosa County Schools. In 2012, Ms. Kuvion offered him a math position teaching algebra at his alma mater. During his first year of teaching, he married his wife, Megan, who's also a teacher in the school district. Today, they have two young boys, Mason and Marley, that attend school across the street at Edwins Elementary. In 2019, Mr. Mueller became the Dean of Students at Fort Walton Beach High. He loves to fish and hunt and watch his boys play every sport available. He is blessed to have a supportive team at both at home and at Fort Walton Beach and continues to work hard for his teachers to work and for his students to learn. Mr. Mueller. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. And with that, I need a motion to approve the appointment of Assistant Principal 1, Marcelo Mueller, 10-month Fort Walton Beach High School, as recommended by the superintendent for approval. Do I have a motion, please? I would be happy to make that motion. All right. Motion. Ms. Garner makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? A second. Second. Dr. Kelly, any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? And the motion carries five to zero. Congratulations, Mr. Mueller. Thank you guys for having me tonight. Um, I'm, I'm just blessed to be in this position, and uh, I promise to work hard, build relationships. Um, everyone here at the board, I want to bring. Can I bring my wife and my kids up? Absolutely. Is that right? Come on up. This is your time. <laughs> for those that don't know my wife, she teaches uh, biomedical sciences over at the same school, Fulham Beach High School. My kids go to Edwin's, and uh, we're, just, we're just blessed to be where we're at. <laughs> these, these guys are my biggest cheerleaders, um, so I, I thank them a lot. My, my uh, in-laws are here also, Mr. Doug and Jan McDonald. Um, my mom couldn't be here tonight. She's uh, out of town, but I know that she's here in spirit. So I just want to thank all of you guys, <coughs> and uh, not to forget my administrative team over there in the corner. Uh, I look forward to just working hard, and like I said, can build, continue to build relationships. So thank you guys again. All right. All right, so now we're going to move to item 5.2, and this will be the appointment of specialist NCLB curriculum and instruction as recommended by the superintendent for approval. And Mr. Chambers, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Bryant and school board. I bring before you Dr. Cheryl Seals. Dr. Seals has passionately served students, parents, her community, and fellow public educators for more than 30 years. Dr. Seals is a bridge builder with effective leadership skills. 
Dr. Seals earned a Bachelor's of Science in Biology and a Master's degree in Curriculum Instruction. She furthered her education by receiving a Specialist degree in Educational Leadership and a Doctorate in Educational Management. Dr. Seals holds cert certifications in Biology, Chemistry, Educational Leadership, and School Principalship. Dr. Seals is proudest of the year she spent helping low-income students, minorities, and students learning English and closing the achievement gap. She and her staff received statewide recognition with requests to model her program initiatives. Several school districts visited Okaloosa County to receive firsthand information on closing the achievement gap. Dr. Seals' successful programs included weekend tutoring, scholarly summer, summer sessions, and instructional learning strategies. The common feedback from students in these programs was that they felt better prepared to succeed academically. Dr. Seals is continually committed to being of service to her local community. Her contributions to the local community are a true testament to our passion for creating positive change. Dr. Seals is a member of many community and civic organizations. Dr. Seals has, happily, is, has been happily married to Steve, a police officer with security forces on Eglin Air Force Base for 35 years. Together, they are proud parents of Steve the second. You're gonna have to help me with one. Nikosi. Nikosi. <laughs> Eva and the late Tracy, as well as the proud grandparents of Evan and Nelia, Dr. Seals. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. And with that, item 5.2 is the appointment of Dr. Cheryl Seals, specialist in CLB curriculum and instructed, instruction as recommended by the superintendent for approval. I need a motion for that approval. I'll make that motion. Okay. Dr. Kelly makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Dr. White, any discussion? I would just like to say one thing. Yes, ma'am. There was a time in our co-joined history when Dr. Seals and her compadre over there, Elaine Anderson, worked with me in the curriculum department, and she was a No Child Left Behind specialist at that time. So I'd just like to say, welcome home, Cheryl. You're back where you're supposed to be. All right. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. And we do have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries five to zero. Congratulations, Dr. Seals. Give an honor to God, who is the focal point of my life, to you, the school board members, and Superintendent Chambers. I thank you for the opportunity to serve as the No Child Left Behind Curriculum Specialist. I am so excited to have the opportunity to work collaboratively with students, parents, the community, and our teachers to work together in a united effort in closing the achievement gap. I will work hard in this position to continue those high levels of learning so that every student can succeed. Many thanks to my husband, Steve. He is Duty called him tonight, so I keep looking through the back door, <laughs> but I still thank him in his absence. My children, my fam I got family members that is here. I have my Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority sisters in the audience. I have my pastor, Reverend Cecil Williams from Grant <laughs> Chapel here. I got my Show River Middle School family back here and all of my school and community friends. Thank you, thank you for your support and your love as I embark upon this new journey. Thank you. And thank you.
All right, we're, we're going to pause, recess for a minute, and then after we clear out, we'll get back to... call this meeting back to order and now we're at section six and public comment and this is 6.1 members of the public desiring to address the school board form MIS 5241 public input and or discussion of agenda items and Mr. McInnes if you would please go over the the rules please yes sir Mr. Chairman uh, our speakers tonight will be allowed four minutes to make their presentation we would ask that all questions and comments be directed to the chairman as this is a meeting of the school board personal attacks against officers and personnel should be excluded from your presentation as those type uh, comments should be made to appropriate supervisory personnel um, items pertaining to personnel matters under the responsibility of the superintendent are not routinely heard before the school board and we would ask that all visitors and public uh, act in a respectful manner tonight thank you all right thank you mr mckinnis and we do have one blue card tonight and miss diana edelstein uh would you please come to the podium and please just state your name for the record and i do have your address on this blue card so you're good diana edelstein okay you have four minutes um okay um i was a choctahatchee class of 1981 style marcher my daughter, Choctahatchee Style Marcher, class of 2013. And my concern tonight is the diminished size of the Style Marcher program. It's extremely small. Um, when my daughter was at Choctaw, I was the uniform mom for the Style Marchers. Her senior year, I dressed 223 students in band uniforms. This year, the uniform mom dressed 84 students in band uniforms. Um, I, I don't know what's happened. Um, Niceville High School had 230 students in band uniforms. I don't know the breakdown of that of color guard and actual band. I'm assuming it's probably about at least 30 color guard. Um, Crestview High School had about 240 in band uniforms. I'm told about 30 of that was color guard. But Walton Beach High School had their average of 150 to 175 students. In recent years, the Choctahatchee Style Marchers has just diminished, and I'm worried the program's going to be gone if we don't do something. Okay. All right. And it's also my understanding that um, Mr. Parks will be leaving, so we're going to be looking for a new band director. Um, that band director needs to be very strong, a very strong band director to put this program back together. Um, I would suggest that whatever committee you have looking at band directors, possibly get an alumni band, band person on that committee or, and a band parent on that committee. All right. Thank you. Do you, you have any more, any more comments? No. Okay. I just right. want to say, Ms. Edelstein, have you had an opportunity to speak with anyone at the school no. about the situation? No. no. Okay. That, that might be something yeah. that you'd want to you'd do. You're going from over 200 to 84 is like yes and that's and the other and, and the thing is the other schools in the county are, are still just as big as they were right but so. in all fairness I think that you know taking that up with the principal or some others there just inquiring right you know not uh, just finding out that might be the way to to go about getting an answer to what you're questioning and okay. so um, a good start. yeah, yeah a good start to just find out or or I'm sure even though you said that band director has indicated he will be leaving. I'm sure he'd be willing to, to speak with you about his procedure of, you know, getting students into uh, band situations. Another thing is to look at the feeder schools. How is that coming along to send those students into that band program? Yeah. Well, I, I remember when I was a young person just starting out at Pryor, the reason I started band at Pryor is because I knew I had to be in band at Pryor to get a shot at Choctahatchee Style March. Right. 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 And if the program is diminished that much, then you're not going to get kids in the middle schools interested either. Has the enrollment dropped quite a bit, considerably? I don't remember off the top of my school? head. Yes, Choctaw's enrollment. Right. Sometimes that will play yeah. into, and I'm just curious. <coughs> I'm not sure the enrollment. Right. 
Ch Choctaws has. Um, Niceville's has gone down a little bit. Crestview's has gone down um, a little bit. But one thing <clears throat> that I do know, and it goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning, you know, what makes this an A-plus school district? Uh, arts is a, is a big piece of that. As all of you know, our band programs in Okaloosa County um, are a source of pride mm -hmm. in, in all that we do. Each and every one of our band directors works extremely hard, long hours, um, gives their all for those kids. Uh, and I appreciate uh, your passion as well. But I also know, and I think we can firsthand um, a testament that the band directors in this county go above and beyond um, for their students. And I'd like to see all of our bands continue to grow as well as all of our programs, but extremely proud of the bands here in Okaloosa County. And I think I can speak for the Thank board. You. We all appreciate and um, support the band programs. Well, I, and, and I just follow up on that sure. and, and say thank you, first of all, for coming. Thank you. And uh, having had a long association with Choctatcha High School, I too would like it to be uh, maybe the way that you say it was. But uh, I would point out, uh, board members, something that you all know, and superintendent, uh, you've supported in the past that uh, the taxpayers of this school district fully fund the seventh period day. And a lot of school districts don't do that. And the fact that we do that, the fact that we offer an extra class every day allows our extracurricular programs to, to excel and to be full. And uh, so I know that uh, the superintendent, given your comments, will be uh, taking a look at this situation and uh, will likely report back to us. But thank you. Thank you for All your right. time. Thank All you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Okay, so uh, sec section seven is committee and staff reports, and this was workshop only. So now we'll move down to section eight. The consent agenda 8.1, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move it. Dr. Kelly makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? I'll second it. Second, Ms. Ivanchek, any discussion? Hear none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries five to zero. So now we'll go all the way down to section nine. Superintendent's human resource recommendations, uh, item 9.1 and 9.2 were information only. So now we'll move to 9.3. Add a field report for the 2021 through 2022 school year. I need a motion to approve, please. I'll move it. Uh, Ms. Gardner makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? A second. Second, Dr. Kelly. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries five to zero. 9.4, proposed revisions to the administrative personnel salary schedule for fiscal year 2021 through 2022. I need a motion to approve, please. I'll move it. Dr. Kelly makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? I'll second it. Second, Ms. Abanchek, any discussion? Hear none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries five to zero. 9.5, department staffing restructure. I need a motion to approve, please. I'll move it. Ms. Abanchek makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? Second. second. Go ahead. Okay, Dr. White got the second. Any discussion? Hear none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries five to zero. 9.6, employment separations. I need a motion to approve, please. I'll move it. Dr. Kelly makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? I'll second it. <laughs> yeah, second, Ms. Ivanchek, and any discussion? Hear none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries five to zero. 9.7, personnel recommendations. I need a motion to approve. I'll move it. Ms. Ivanchek makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? I'll second. Second. Dr. Kelly, any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries five to zero. 9.8, employee transfers. Need a motion to approve, please. I'll move it. Ms. Garner makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? I'll second. Second, Ms. Ivanchek. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries five to zero. 9.9, .9, reinstatement, reimbursement of sick leave due to line of duty, illness, injury, medical examination. I need a motion to approve, please. I'll move it. Dr. Kelly makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second, Ms. Ivanchek. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries five to zero. And finally, 9.10, leave without pay. I need a motion to approve, please. I'll make the motion. Dr. Kelly makes a motion. Do I have a second? 
I'll second. Second, Ms. Garner. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries five to zero. Section 10 was discussion agenda. We had no items moved from the consent agenda. So we are now down to section 11, construction program owners, representatives, business. And Dr. Kelly, I'm gonna turn it over to you, ma'am. Thank, ma Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, we had another lively meeting this morning, bright and early. And as you know, my fellow colleagues, once something is completed and out of the warranty period, it drops off the agenda. So we will move down now to task order two, phase three, which is the final phase of that task order two, which was the district-wide school security upgrade projects and other items that relate. In that phase, we're talking about Floresa, Kenwood, and Walker. Blue Water and Walker have the brick and windows here, so that should begin to flow much more quickly now that those items are here. They also did a little site work to the drainage issues. Kenwood is waiting on materials. Florosa is waiting on windows. Bruner is mostly done. Pryor just needs some IT items remaining. STEM is close to being wrapped up. Edge and Antioch, as we said last time, are waiting on aluminum to arrive. Eglin started today. Destin Elementary is working on a start date prior to the summer. <coughs> OTC has a summertime start very likely as you know that's year-round so there's really not a time when we can work there with no students present. Southside and Northwood are looking at a spring break start if not before. That brings us to task order number four. Baker's Kitchen is done and out of warranty as we've said previously. Prior middle school's renovation will start uh, in spring break and we should have that GMP at our next meeting. Task order number five was time and materials for Choctaw Stadium, and that is completed and in the warranty period. Task order number nine, that was Choct I'm sorry, Crestview's Stadium. All that work is done and just now finishing the pressure washing and railing aesthetics, and then we'll check that one off the list. Task order 10 was time and materials for the Bay Area Emergency Remediation, and that one is completed and falls off our list after this report because that will be out of the warranty period. Task order 11 are the district-wide sales tax roofing projects. All of those are complete and punched out, and probably the one item on there that we're most proud of, or at least I am as a former Big Red Machine parent, is that band room at Crestview High School <laughs> has uh, remained stable through all those rains. So that item is completed and in the warranty period. Task order number 12, district-wide sales tax construction projects. The status on that is those funds will be received Wednesday. Those funds will be transferred rather. And so we're in the bidding process for the five multi-purpose buildings. Crestview and uh, Laurel Hills new classroom projects will come shortly after those. So all of that is moving along. Task order number 13, time and materials for the consolidation of the district services here. That first phase is done and the second phase has begun, which is the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing inspection. And we should have something back to us to look at in mid-March. Task order 14 was the boys' field house at Fort Walton Beach. That has been dried in and they've started on the inside work and they are waiting on three HVAC units, which should arrive in March. Task order 15, the gym floor replacement at Crestview, Davidson, and Lewis. That GMP should be to us by our next meeting, so look for that. Task order 16, the roofing and canopy projects at Choctaw and Lewis. The engineer and architects have finished their drawings, and so we should see those perhaps split into two projects in the future so that one doesn't hold up the other. We're looking at a March time frame there as well. Task order 17, roof replacement at Blue Water and Walker. Those are on hold right now because we're hoping to get to take advantage of a hopeful market adjustment in the positive on the pricing of supplies there. Task order 18, uh, we voted on tonight. That was a soffit repair at Destin Elementary and that was a quasi-emergency, but we'll be taking care of that. And under additional topics for the Citizens uh, Okaloosa Sales Tax Half Cents Group, the Citizens Oversight Committee will meet again Tuesday, March the 1st at 4 p.m. And I would just like to say that as Michelle Anchors rolls out of that role that she's had for two years, personally and professionally, I will miss Michelle. No one 
could have done the job that she did with such a finesse and credibility as she did, both seeing us through the sales tax initiative and now seeing us through this oversight committee going into the second year. So we will miss Michelle. I will certainly personally, but I also welcome Jason Belcher, whom I've known for a long time, as the new chair of that committee. And fellow board members, that's all I have on the construction update for this time. And I would just comment that you have on your additional topics the website data update. Yes. Uh, for those out there that would like to see all the construction projects that we have going on with the half cent sales tax, it's right there on our web page. And uh, I think Dr. White made a comment how easy it was to get to it and how detailed it was, too. So, and we uh, were told this morning that they've updated that to include the newer financials and newer project updates. So if you're interested, go and look now. You should see more updated, more recent material and information up there. Dr. Kelly, I have a question, please. Um, on the um, security upgrade project that we're continuing, um, how many schools are left before we, do you have an idea on that? Before well, we're, when you're talking about left. Meaning on mean, the, like the uh, single point of entry and all the, okay, all the so, hardening, yeah. So it's just bits and pieces that we've talked about okay. here as I listed out. All of that that I discussed mm -hmm. on that agenda, right. that was the remaining bits and pieces. Okay, gotcha. Okay, That's right, you. Dr. Kelly, mm -hmm. yes ma'am. I think there are four, five that are in process now and the last four to start following that mm -hmm. um, to be completed this summer, by this summer. Great. So we've come a long way. Yeah, and, we have. Uh, um, and not to get off topic, but, you know, today is the anniversary of the shooting. And so then right after that, we um, had um, the Safety Act came in and that pushed this. So we have just want the public to know how far we've come and, and all of these efforts to harden our schools and to make it safer for our students and our employees. So thank you for a great report. Yeah, and I think that just counting on my, my notes here, there uh -huh. were 12, I believe, that I mentioned tonight. And out of almost 40 campuses, I think we've done a pretty great job at getting those job. up and done yeah. and this, in such a timely manner. And looking at the way our schools were built at the time, they were many in the 60s and 70s. They were not built for the situation we have now with the, all the openness, so having to go back was not an easy task. Uh, a lot of reconstruction and, and redoing, so uh, I'm very proud of all the efforts our district has made and, and getting those more, and and we're just, just about a, there. I'll just put a punctuation point on that. I've said this before, so I wasn't going to say it tonight, but I will since you've opened it back up. So I get a lot of comments about, you're always talking about roofing. You're always talking about <laughs> roofing. But when you realize that of our 40 campuses, no substantial roof work has been done mm -hmm. in decades. We've put Band-Aids on it all this time. And now we finally have a pot of money that we can do something substantial. We have over 120 acres of roofing. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about that much roofing mm -hmm. and that much time that the roofs have been allowed to go, there's no wonder that we're always talking about roofing. Mm -hmm. So thank you again, citizens who voted for the sales tax Absolutely. to allow us to do that. Dr. Kelly, after you present these, are you able to email these to us? I yes. was going back to look for something and of course I couldn't find my piece of paper but if you would email then I can just put them in a folder for um, sure. somebody asking a question. I suggest that would be you, you, you might consider uh, asking Ms. Crawford uh, sure. to email yes. those yes. out. Yes. And then, uh, Absolutely. That, uh, she has those good. or Shelly, one yep. of them can do that right. certainly. Mm -hmm. They're very valuable. Thank you. Okay. So now we have we do have some items we have to vote on, and uh, item 11.2 is the authorization for professional services agreement from Faithful and Gould for price validation for program number six, task order number 16, roofing and canopy projects at Choctahatchee High School and Lewis School. So I need a motion to approve. I'll move it. Dr. Kelly makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? Second. Second, Ms. Garner. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries 5 to 0. 11.3, authorization for professional services agreement from Faithful and Gould for price validation for program number 6, task order number 17, roof replacement at Blue Water Elementary School and Walker Elementary School. So I need a motion to approve, please. I'll move it. Uh, Ms. Savanchek makes a motion. Do I have a second, please? Second. Second, Dr. White. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries five to zero. 
11.4, program number six, task order number 18, time and materials, task order repair, soffit, a repair soffit at Destin Elementary School. I need a motion to approve, please. I'll move it. Ms. Garner makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second, Ms. Savanchek. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries five to zero. So now we'll move down to section 12, information technology seat management contract, and we do have one item to vote on tonight. 12.1 CACI task order number 2-200 for security camera repairs at Choctahatchee High School. I need a motion to approve, please. Move it. Dr. White makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second, Dr. Kelly, any discussion? Hear none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries five to zero. So now we're to section 13, attorney's business and Mr. McInnes. And no report tonight. Thank you, Mr. McInnes. And section 14 is superintendent's business, Mr. Chambers. Thank you, Mr. Bryant. Uh, as you know, on, on Thursday, gave uh, a number of um, updates, you know, regarding the school district. And I would just encourage anyone who would be interested to go view uh, Thursday's board workshop. Also want to just say uh, happy Valentine's to the school board and to all of our employees. Hopefully everyone's going to have a great, great evening. And then lastly, I want to say uh, thank you to Dr. Kelly. You look at um, just the report that you gave and all the different um, works that are happening throughout the school district. And then you look at being a part in leading that venture. Just very much appreciated because there's so much going on. And for the first time in a long time, we're fixing things the right way and not having to piecemeal things. So just appreciate that leadership. Thank you. It's my honor. Right. Anything else, Mr. Chambers? That is it. All right. So now we're down to Section 15, board members' announcements and requests for information. And I am going to start with my <laughs> vice chair, the Honorable Dr. <laughs> Diane Kelly. Thank you. Well, there are a lot of kudos to give today. So first of all, congratulations to the Niceville High School cheer teams and their coaches for their state wins. Their JV got first in game day and fourth in composition, and the varsity received second in game day and sixth in composition. And their coaches are Tanya Herndon and Lindsey Williams. And congratulations, we're talking about feeder programs and how important they are. Congratulations to the Ruckle Rockettes. They were recognized as fourth in the nation in both hip hop and jazz, and second in the state <coughs> in hip hop and jazz. And the Eaglettes dance group scored first in the state for small varsity hip hop and jazz, as well as most crowd appeal. So those are pretty great. And I'd like to also say, if you haven't heard, Kudos to our Northwest Florida State College President, Dr. Devin Stevenson, who will be among the few college presidents to be honored with the Shirley B. Gordon Award of Distinction in April in Denver, Colorado, for showing strong support of student success. And uh, just so you know, that college presidents may only win this one time in their career. Wow, and wow. he is receiving this fairly early in his career. So we're very proud to have Dr. Stevenson with us and congratulations to him. Yeah. I would echo Dr. Stevenson. It's been such a great mm -hmm. part of our community. I know when we were at the science fair, how many kids got scholarships because of uh, Dr. I know Dr. Stevenson working hand in hand with the school district to make that happen. So, mm -hmm. all right, Dr. White. Yes, thank you, Mr. Bryant. Well, of course, I had some remarks uh, Thursday at the workshop regarding Choctahatchee Boys basketball, and we'll go ahead and keep moving forward here. I uh, would like to congratulate Choctaw's Danielle Borgers and Kayla Henry on their superior ratings at the Florida Vocal Association District 1 solo and ensemble at UWF February the 5th, and they're qualified to go on to state solo and ensemble. Also, Choctaw Archery had a great weekend at their tournament, and congratulations to Madison Mall for setting a new school and county record of 291. Wow. And speaking of Choctahatchee's band program, congratulations to Choctaw's Color Guard as they had their first competition this past weekend in Daphne, Alabama, and they placed first in their class out of 18 teams. And also, uh, Miss CHS pageant activities begin this week, so uh, check Choctaw's <coughs> Facebook page for information about that. And then Meg's will be hosting their Meg's Middle School Showcase for all incoming sixth graders, and that'll be going on tomorrow. That's always a fun event. And then finally, I'd like to say Happy Valentine's Day to everyone 
and especially to my bride as we now celebrate our 52nd Valentine's Day together. Wow. Thank awesome. you all. Congratulations. That's a lot of roses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we spent this one here. That's a lot of money. <laughs> and, and Dr. White, I just have to comment on the uh, archery program at Choctaw. So I remember when coming on the board how a lot of those students were probably at Shalimar or Megs mm -hmm. and how yeah. that program has developed into what it is now and now at the high school level they are achieving amazing right. things awesome. so awesome. pretty awesome to hear. Ms. Vancheck? Yeah okay board members I have something I want to bring to your attention um, tonight and and talk about briefly um, this has come to my attention as we're talking about different events back on December 14th in 2020 um, we uh, voted to go with an agreement with a group called Huddle Tickets that goes by GoFan. I actually uh, made the motion to accept this. This is an electronic um, use of uh, being able to buy tickets online and so forth, and um, we voted that in. And at the time, the reason I uh, went for it was because I saw it as a good opportunity to have an alternative way for individuals to buy tickets. However, I've become increasingly concerned that our schools have moved to this being the exclusive way of being able to buy tickets to events at a school. And I think we need to look at that, Mr. Superintendent, because in my mind, um, making this the, uh, the exclusive way of buying a ticket to uh, attend a school function is, is putting out a bunch of students and perhaps others that would not be able to attend. And um, I don't know, I spoke with Mr. Humphrey about this, and he told me that um, that seems to be moving in that direction, and I would appreciate if you would uh, you know, work with that and, and see what we're, what we're doing. I, I think it's great as a, a way to do it. However, I have to say on a personal note, I was invited to something and was reminded that I need to go to GoFan. So um, I can I can see that I don't mind, but you know there are uh, individuals who are not comfortable using an electronic form of pay, and certainly you know how student is. You know they have a ball game Friday night. They may not know till 30 minutes before they're going, and they've got that in hand. And on top of that, if you look down about the cost, you know a, 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 say a, a, a ball game ticket from Florida High School is now eight dollars, but to use this service it now becomes nine dollars. And as Mr. Humphrey and I were talking about, we've made GoFan a lot of money. He estimates by the end of the school year, uh, close to half a million dollars with that many ticket sales. So there's a couple things I have a concern about. One, making sure that this is not the exclusive way that our students and fans can go to events at our schools. The other thing is that I'm just wondering with all the very talented, smart tech people we have, if we couldn't come up with our own app instead of giving our money to GoFan. So I would appreciate, uh, appreciate it, Mr. Superintendent, if you would check into it on the district side and, and maybe give us a report of how that's, how that's going and, uh, and let us board members look at this one more time because according to Mr. Humphrey, in the next few weeks, these kinds of procedures need to be talked about and put in place for the, the fall. I'll be happy to do so. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you. Oh, you're, I'm sorry, still you're oh yeah, yeah, I'm no, um, that, that is my uh, main concern tonight. I just want to bring to your attention, and again, I want to thank you for going with the, the proclamation tonight that I presented. Thank you so much. So I don't know if anybody has any comments on that. No, but thank you for bringing this up. I purchased some tickets just this past week, and I am all about supporting the schools, but as I'm going in, I see a family that has, you know, some teenage students that attend, and, you know, it's five, six extra dollars for every single event they go to, and it adds up. It, it does. And so. what if they don't want to use an electronic form? They're being turned away, is my understanding. And I, if you check into that, but I, I just don't think that's a good way. We're losing that support. Because right, there was not a cash box. It, that was the only way, and I was also. The only way in is uh, that, yeah. Gardner. Okay. Um, I think you know that I am a big fan of Catch the Wave, and we, I just recently read through ours. Um, February, as we know, is uh, National Heart um, Month, and I just really encourage our female, our ladies, to um, 
Look at that Catch the Wave. The United Healthcare have provided some websites there to go and to look at um, some important information, heart disease and symptoms, and I know that everybody's under a lot of stress, and we can't always contribute that tingle, that um, little strange feeling to stress. So I do encourage um, individuals, uh, our employees, if we know that our females, that it is the number one killer of, of our ladies, that, um, even combining all of the cancers, heart disease, heart is um, a leader. So take time and read that and look at those websites and take care of yourself out there. Speaking of Catch the Wave also, um, we just approved, what was it, 8.23, uh, the extending of the drop. The um, Tomorrow night, 15th, at uh, Shoal River Middle School, four to five, there is going to be a question and answer uh, seminar about retirement, um, your leave. And somebody told me many years ago that all because you can retire doesn't mean you should. And especially at certain ages that, you know, with the insurance, I have somebody laughing right there. All because you can doesn't mean you should. But I really encourage our employees to look into this and look at what best fits your family. Some friends retiring right now, and they really, really do wish they had um, not jumped into drop so fast. But I, I encourage you, what, five, six years out? I mean, we've all retired there. But that is so, so important. Uh, ending on a really positive and exciting note, the Lady Vikings, I shared last week, or a couple days ago, that they were playing, they won um, over Leon. What an exciting, exciting game. They will be moving on to the Sweet 16 tomorrow, so they will be playing St. Augustine, the Yellow Jackets. So come out to the fort at 7 p.m. Go to the retirement thing first. It's in the north end. It's in the north end. Maybe we will get something down on the south end soon, but go to, to the retirement first and then head over to the Vikings. That is such a lively crowd. Again, I. I not real being into basketball, but when you sit there and you watch those ladies and the excitement and the fun in there, you just you just get all wrapped up in it. Um, I will close up with Happy Valentine's Day. There was so much kindness and excitement, and I mean, just even everywhere you went. So let's just keep that going, not just today, but the days that follow. So I'm done. All right, thank you, Ms. Gardner. And I will finish up and just want to say thank you for being here tonight to express your thoughts. Uh, we always encourage public comment, and uh, it's always great to see people taking an interest. And, you know, uh, I, I will just comment on the, our band programs, uh, having the opportunity to meet all of our band directors. It's always, you know, just exciting to see all the recognition that they get through the awards. Uh, you know, we do have a top, uh, like Mr. Chambers said, our, our uh, band programs, all of our art programs definitely are tops in the in the state so uh, but we do thank you for coming out tonight and uh, I would also like to share some love for my Laurel Hill hobos as you know uh, back at when football season started we got to wear all of our jerseys our shirts well little Laurel Hill does not have a football team but they do have basketball and baseball and and soccer. and, and volleyball. volleyball so I just wanted to show some love for my hobos up on the north end. It's Carolina and, Blue, North Carolina. Uh, <laughs> well, they'll say it's Laurel Hill powder blue, but... Uh, but it wasn't always <laughs> that color. I remember when it was a royal blue. Right, it, was, it was actually darker, so my pastor mm -hmm. went to Laurel Hill. He graduated in 68, and I would see his stuff and it's a few years before me <laughs> yeah I was I born in 68 so that's what I remind my pastor I was born Whatever. and really graduated so you know they're having that retirement seminar <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, good things that are going on up in the north end I would just like to take make a shout out to Crestview the uh, boys basketball team it has moved to the regional quarterfinals they will be playing nice on thursday night at seven o'clock in crestview so we won't have to make the trip all the way across the state to jacksonville or st augustine so that's pretty awesome and in weightlifting we've had a couple of uh, uh we had one student who actually had a silver medal in the snatch and lift for 100 pounds and a bronze for the uh the clean and jerk um with a 300 pound total for her weight class. So uh, that was Maddie Muse. So congratulations to awesome. Maddie Muse, our lady bulldog weightlifter. 
And then we also had some of our wrestlers, our Lady Bulldog wrestlers who qualified for the regional tournament in the 105 pound division, uh, Seagram Metzger, and in the 110 pound division, Freitas, and I hope I'm saying their name right, Metzger. And I know that the HOSA program at Crestview High School actually did really well uh, in, the, in the national uh, uh, thing that happened, and I did not get any information I had uh, looked it up and I couldn't find it but I did hear they had one and so the next meeting I'll come back with a better presentation on that but our HOSA program at Crestview High School was recognized so uh, I would I too like Dr. White and everybody else would like to wish my beautiful bride uh, we've been married 28 years getting ready to hit we'll get ready to hit 29 so uh, and I know she's watching so happy Valentine's Day and uh, to everybody that's here tonight again thank you uh, staff for being here so now we'll move down to section 16, public comment 16.1. And this is the two minute version of public comment. And uh, we have no comp blue cards on that. And with that, Julie, Steve, Sheila, Lee. All right, this meeting's adjourned.